What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the F the Lines podcast, the show where we talk about creativity, focus, happiness, and how to start a business that doesn't eat you alive. This week, I'm excited to talk with Dave Fultz, aka my dad. He's a black and white photographer, woodworker, and also someone who I've taken a ton of inspiration from over the years because he's always doing things a little differently. He develops his own photos, makes amazing frames and boxes with locally sourced woods like fluorescent sumac, and restores antique furniture in his spare time. We talk about the difference between art and craft, why he enjoys using traditional tools and techniques, how sketching cuts down on mistakes, and the best way to get started on a simple DIY woodworking project. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode with my dad, and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, hello. All right, test your microphone one more time. Hello, <laughs> hello. All right, so we are live on the F Lines podcast. I've invited you, my dad, Dave Foltz, here to talk about photography and woodworking. Um, the first question I want to ask you, um, as someone who does art and as someone who I would consider to be a craftsperson, what do you feel is the difference between the word art and craft? What do those two words mean to you? And are they different or are they the same thing? They mean nothing to me. <laughs> I don't, I, I've heard this, this conversation for 50 years and I really don't know. I think both of them uh, are, are describe qualities of different kinds of people. The art people, to me, are the guys that can paint, sculpt, carve, and the crafts people may not—they may not have the same kind of talent in that way, direction. But so they're they doing a different kind of the craft people. Are they doing a different kind of work? They're doing, yeah. I I think so. I I think so. Art art is, uh, <laughs> uh, it's. It's probably a terrible question to ask, and I don't know how to answer it, really. I saved the most difficult question for the first one. <laughs> oh, gee. I wish you'd thrown that one out. <laughs> well, I think I think it's a question that a lot of artistic people and creative people um, get asked a lot. And yes. maybe they're, I mean, what's, I guess, what's the difference between the audience that receives something that's a craft versus art like how do you how do you experience a piece of art versus like a craft like is do you see a craft as something more uh that someone would make a, a cabinet where it's like more functional and art is more kind of like abstract do you see it that way or do you see it kind of differently um art is more expensive craft is less, <laughs> that's a good way less expensive <laughs> <laughs> that's true the, the craft <laughs> The craft things, I, I guess, tend to be more functional. Art tends to be something to look at. Okay. So going off that, do you think someone can be um, a craftsman without being an artist? And can someone be an artist without being a craftsman? Oh, no. Or is there... <laughs> so, for example, if you if you're making something functional if you're making a cabinet at what point does it become art and if you're when you start embellishing it a lot okay you know maybe with carvings or with with uh, really fine interesting uh scroll saw work or paintings you know there there are painted cabinets from the old days that were really beautiful and they painted scenes and, and decorative things, flowers and whatnot. Um, well, so one thing I see I see in your work that's really that's good about the stuff you do is it's simple. I mean, you you certainly go into like the artistic or maybe what we're talking about is artistic part where you're embellishing and putting extra details into it. But I mean, if you look so like. I have a couple of your frames and like if you look at the one at the top i mean it's really simple i mean it's just basically four pieces mitered mm -hmm. together but there's something kind of like 
kind of like artistic about it. So like, I think it's sort of interesting um, that people, people kind of gravitate naturally towards that, like thinking that art is complex and like embellished and, you know, adding those extra fancy flourishes. But do you think that something that someone would normally think of as the craft, something simple and practical can actually be artistic? <laughs> oh boy, you won't let me go on this, will you? Uh, well, obviously simple things can be artistic, but like a four-piece mitered frame, um, it's a mechanical art. I don't really think of it as being a pure art. It's just mm, okay. a matter of making your your measurements and your cuts correctly, assembling it correctly, sanding it, and finishing it. The the what might be called art is when you start using really interesting wood, which really stands out. Okay. Uh, maybe some kind of a burl or or flame or bird's eye maple or something that's really striking uh, people who see it think of it as more as art than just your plain four-piece pine frame okay so uh, maybe it's like so art maybe is like sort of calling the, attention something that calls attention to you yeah um mm. and maybe like the craft side is something that you experience passively maybe you get the same amount of or like a similar amount of enjoyment. Maybe it's like a longer term enjoyment or something like that. Because you certainly, like if I look at a picture like, or a, you know, like a frame like that, maybe it doesn't jump out to me at first, but it seems like really well constructed and there's something enjoyable about that, you know? Like it doesn't feel tacky. There's like an integrity to it. But like you said, it doesn't, it's not like an Andy Warhol, like picture of a banana or something where it immediately makes you pay attention to it so i guess that kind of leads to the the next question which is um how is it different from you when you're making stuff that you know is just going to be for you versus something that you're making like to sell or to give to someone is it any different when yes. you're making stuff <laughs> how is it different for me i put far less effort into it for which I one? make for me i put far less effort i make it as quick and as functional as i can yeah. for somebody else i i i spend more time at it well i yeah but you made like the the oars right i mean those are is that something you consider quick and functional or did you pretty quick and yeah. functional yeah i didn't spend a lot of time i wouldn't sell them because i made a mess of my gluing and <laughs> But as for for working oars, they'll be fine. Yeah, they just won't look absolutely pretty. If you had an infinite amount of time, would you make the sort of things that you make for other people for yourself, or do you actually really enjoy like the simple stuff? Like obviously, it's convenient to work quicker, but do you also enjoy the things you make that are actually simpler? well i've made a lot of really elaborate stuff but that was years ago i don't have the patience to do it <laughs> i don't have the patience now to do it like i did 30 years ago um i i, I uh, i've made some made a uh, a dining room set once with a table nine chairs oh um, is that one of the first is that that was one of like the first things you did for when you were working for yourself right? oh yeah 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 yep yeah table nine chairs and a a big uh china cabinet and it was all made in like the federal style and it took an immense amount of time to make <laughs> and i lost my total shirt on it <laughs> but uh uh, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I don't want to do that now. Yeah. I, I want to do things that I can get done quick, more quickly. I guess maybe as you get older, you realize <laughs> you're closer to the end than the <laughs> beginning. So you want to finish things up <laughs> faster. <laughs> but no, I, it, it's also, I just, I think I like some of the simpler things. I like them more now. I, and I like working with just more with natural pieces of wood half round pieces of sapling and 
uh, stuff like that, which I just kind of shape it a little bit and go with its own shape and, and add other pieces to it rather than trying to machine everything into a perfect straight line yeah, or a perfect uh, curve or whatever. Uh, but I, it has a lot to do with my patience factor. <laughs> my patience factor right now is not not really good. So I, I try to do the, the, the quicker and simpler things, but I try to make them look good. Yeah. I, I think that's funny because as I've like worked as a, a web designer, I would, you know, design these super fancy things and maybe like the nonprofit project that I did that you know about that took me like a whole year and, you know, didn't really get paid hardly anything for. Um, that was probably a really similar experience, but I think kind of like what becoming an expert is is just knowing what to cut out you know like knowing how to get to the solution quicker um and it's almost like more enjoyable working that way because we, your final product is not this really complex hulking thing it's just like something simple that you've whittled away all of the unnecessary stuff from um another question i want to ask you is i know you work a lot with like traditional stuff with woodworking and photography. Um, what what drew you to the philosophy of sticking with a lot of the older style tools and um, ways of working? Um, yeah, I don't know. Nostalgia, I guess, for some reason. I've, I've always sort of liked some of the older ways of doing things. Um, I admired, like in photography, I admired some of the old... Uh, uh craftsmen or artists <laughs> like edward weston and uh ansel adams and i th that was my first appreciation of black of photography in general was was uh seeing pictures that the the old masters made and uh i just it, it just had an attraction for me and so i spent a whole bunch of years trying to make pictures that are you know one quarter as good as what they make <laughs> well i mean that's the experience that pretty much everyone has you have yeah. some sort of idol or something like that you felt you feel like you're spending your whole life trying to live up to them but i mean in a lot of ways you may be surpassing them in other in other ways for example i mean ansel adams wasn't a woodworker as far as i know no he was I mean, a so, great he's a great pian pianist oh really okay i didn't know yeah. that yeah. yeah so i mean i think probably the way that most people are the greatest artists is by combining two different skills that no one has combined together in that way before, which is what you're doing with photography and word work. Like, you know, whenever you go to a show, there's no one that has anything remotely close to what you have in terms of the, the products together, like the woodworking and the photography. You know, there's some great photographers, there's some great woodworkers, but no one's combining those two things together and I think that's something creative people kind of forget about because if you're trying to be the best woodworker in the world, well, that's going to be pretty, pretty tough because you've got you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of people throughout you know history and even just now that you're competing with. But if you create your own niche, which is what you've done, you can set up you know a circumstance where you're basically the best person in the world at combining black and white photography and woodworking. I mean, it's pretty funny. Um, what's what's one example of maybe like uh old process or you know your your older cameras or something that you feel where the older process adds something more interesting or more valuable like in you know just like in the way that you do it or like what's something you enjoy about doing it that way versus doing it you know another way well <laughs> I don't know. Or is there something valuable about the frustration of doing something that's yeah. like a slightly more complex process, but you're actually, so for example, with the, like the developing photos, it's different than digital because you're actually touching things. Um, is there something like that that kind of sticks out to you that you notice is the difference between doing things the old way and the new way? The um, de developing my own picture negatives and photographs. I always enjoyed, I guess, the chemistry of the 
this thing. I, I've having taken chemistry in high school and college and so forth and enjoyed it more or less. Um, I, I still do enjoy it. I, I it's uh, I like to see the image coming out when I'm developing a picture. Um, of course, you can do it digitally, and, and you can see a picture being developed as well. Uh, everything I do is takes more time, and it's slower. But uh, Does that give you more time to think about what you're doing and like experiencing the actual process of it coming into being versus just like you know digital where yeah, it happens immediately maybe <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you know it's sort of uh, yeah, before i said um i don't have the patience anymore yet i still hang with um traditional black and white photography which takes a lot of patience yeah. it takes way more time than than digital does right and y you can have poor results uh, and you won't realize it's a poor result for many hours or even days yeah you know you take a picture that that's bad it's on the, your roll of negatives and um it might be a week before i find out it's bad yeah and by then i could be miles away from possibly taking it ever again is there some sort of like weird extra like faith or something that like when you you know when you take a digital picture you know what it looks like immediately but when you take a picture that you can't see do you, how, do you almost have to have like some sort of faith that it's gonna huh. turn out um because if you just if you just kept thinking about what does it look like what does it look uh -huh. like i mean you make yourself go crazy basically so i mean how do you it, does that picture kind of like live in your imagination or do you just forget about it after you've taken it and just kind of wait until you develop it or do you think about what it's going to look like no, the, the good ones i think about yeah you know there's a lot of them that you take that are uh, you'll just sort of pass by and forget about them soon but there's good ones yeah you know you think it's going to be a good one and you hope it's going to be a good one and uh, you develop the negative, and that's when you're, I really find out. Um, I, I think I enjoyed developing negatives as much as doing anything else because it's like getting a, a surprise Christmas present yeah. sometimes, you know, because that's the first glimpse you have of the real thing or the opposite of the real thing. But uh, And I can tell generally when I've got a good one, and... Uh, I know right away if it's bad, so I, I throw away a lot of negatives. Probably nine out of ten negatives get thrown away eventually. Maybe not at first, yeah. but uh, eventually they do. Um, I think that I mean that's kind of cool because if I take a digital picture, I know what it looks like immediately, and there's really no time for me to sort of experience like the moment in my imagination, you know, and think about what I want it to be and what I want it to become. Um, and yes, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Um, in terms of doing stuff the old way, I mean, maybe not just that, but what role does like limitation or what limitations do you put on your work that you feel like makes it better in the, in the long run? limitations yeah like, like what do you have any what? rules for what you will and won't do when you're oh. creating something that help you kind of come out with that end product that you're satisfied with or like if you're adding you know layers to wood how do you know when to stop when do you when do you stop putting you know details into it or you know making yeah. it trying to make it look fancier stuff like that do you have any rules you live by <laughs> in terms of making wood or making uh, photography well i don't know if i have any rules or not but they're they're sort of uh intuitive rules when you when you just tell yourself that's enough stop you know don't do it <laughs> don't do it anymore it's good enough i mean yeah 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 because you can drive yourself crazy by overworking things yeah and you have to sort of be able to accept things as like a negative. Like there's only so much you can get out of a negative um, without uh, scanning it and going digital or right, something. Right, and editing, but Doing yeah. the traditional darkroom way, I can only make it so good. Yeah. And uh, I have 
I, I mostly have learned uh, when, where that point is, you know, what's, what's, when to stop. what's maybe one recent project or one project that sticks out to you in your mind where you, you felt that like intuitive feeling where you're like, okay, it's time to, time to stop. Hmm. Let's see. You, you, that's not a good question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I was repairing some antiques for somebody, a friend, and yeah. recently, and one of them was a, uh, I guess, a little book rack or a magazine rack thing, and it was it was old, you know, and uh, probably 120 years old or so. And it was walnut, but the thing was in awful shape. The front of it was all cracked. It had probably 10 or 12 cracks in the front, and, and the piece, the, it was a wide piece, probably about 12 inches wide. Yeah, that's, it yeah. Had come oh, there we go. It had come apart in several places, and I could have done a really good job on that, but it would have I would have spent maybe 20 or 30 hours <laughs> on it because I would have had to cut it apart, re-glue it, and then... Uh, there was a, another thing that was going on there. There were a lot of carvings, relief carvings on the front. Uh -huh. So if I cut it apart, re-glued it, things wouldn't line up where they were to have to do more carvings. And, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it, it was just... So maybe it's like the point where you feel like the work starts to compound in your mind. Like you see... You can go to one of two ways and one path is leading to finishing it, finishing your product. And the other one is leading not just to one step, but to kind of like this hydra of steps. That's probably a good sign <laughs> for when you should probably quit and, you know, just agree with yourself that you've that you've finished. Does that does that kind of like sum up what you were feeling? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very familiar with that um, as a web designer. Um, uh, I see you sketching a lot. What What's the importance of using just a pencil and paper to kind of like work out your ideas before you actually start really working on something? Oh, it, it helps me immensely. I, I have to do it. If I don't do it, I make bad mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, I've just done it for so long that uh, uh, I, I am prone to making mistakes. And if, if I just charge into something without really planning it much, a woodworking thing, um, I'm bound to make do something wrong. Yeah. yeah. So I, I need to do that, and I need to get my measurements and all that stuff down and before I actually start doing the woodworking. Right. Um, I also know that you do a lot of DIY stuff. You're always building things for um, yourself. So if someone's thinking about getting into starting to maybe do some really small woodworking projects, what first of all, where where might they learn some of those skills from? Obviously, there's places like YouTube. You can go out and watch videos. Are there any books or any people you really you really admire that you where did you where did you learn woodworking from just by doing it yourself I'm, no i mostly learned it working summers at gunlock chair factory okay so like a job yeah it was a job experience. i mean that job uh included almost every aspect of woodworking from uh piling rough lumber to running it through planers to yeah. sawing it and i mean doing it's the best way to learn but you know there are shows on television where they show you things and you get it's a thing you got to do to learn it yeah you know so if someone's if someone wants to do a first project what would be a good simple project to do and then also what what are the kind of like the basic just the basic tools what would you get first if you were just thinking about doing something really simple for woodworking really simple i get hand tools i get i get uh uh, a crosscut saw, a hand crosscut saw. I would get some small chisels, and I would use uh, like Lowe's or you know your your lumber store wood, pine yeah. or something. Yeah. And start out with using that something that's soft and easy to work with. And also less expensive for pine. And, uh, yeah. 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 Um, 
first project, make a dovetail box. Look, get a book, read about it. Okay. Make a dovetail box because you're using a saw, you're using a chisel and a hammer, and that's about all you need. But it's one of the kind of complicated things that if you can do that, you it can teaches do, you something. You can do like scalable a lot of other skills. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's a good project. I'm gonna wrap it up here because we kind of have to go. But um, it's been really fun having you on the podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um and you you got over the initial hurdle of talking about abstract creativity so oh after that it was just it was just easy as pie <laughs> yeah, yeah. um so you should have warned me what you're gonna ask <laughs> i just lured you straight into a trap um <laughs> so people people can find you at davefoltz.com we are we're working on the website and we we're eventually going to have products up there um but you can people can get in touch with you that way if they're interested in your woodworking or your photography um and i'll uh, we'll have you back on the podcast again sometime if i can drag you on here <laughs> i think we better <laughs> All right. Any any parting words of wisdom? Nope. nope. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I, I hope to see you again real soon. All right. Well, this has been the F Lions podcast. I'm Andrew Foltz. You can find me on Twitter at F the Lions, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>